about object oriented programming in python through real world examples okay so let's get started and uh, again this course assumes that you have a basic knowledge in python okay so you must have a basic knowledge in python to follow this course i hope you might be having so no worries so let's get started so object oriented programming is basically a structure of programming a programming paradigm in python okay so you might you and you know nowadays it's getting a rise okay it's actually getting a rise because it you know this world is actually object oriented wait okay yeah you, you got it right this world is also an object oriented so object oriented programming you know uh, the best advantage of this would be you know interacting with uh, uh, real world objects more precisely and more accurately than the other programming paradigms available so when i say programming paradigm think of like a pattern available okay so programming paradigms are nothing but uh, programming patterns okay so you have a lot of patterns in, under this topic okay so one will be functional programming procedural programming and other would be our hero very own object oriented programming fine fine so so what is object oriented programming is all about well, let me remove okay let me have this programming paradigm so object oriented programming is nothing but a programming paradigm nothing but a programming pattern okay so a different way of writing a code in python right it's not different way it's actually a pythonic way it's actually the real pythonic way okay so yeah so under object oriented programming okay the moment you think of your object oriented programming uh, the thing which comes to your mind is actually object right yes object oriented so it is going to be attributed to the object so you have objects here okay so i talk about objects in a minute don't worry so objects in python okay so everything is an object in python okay take everything it's actually an object of a class okay so yeah again you got a new word there we have a class okay so to be honest oop of the grounded programming is, uh, so is fondly fondly called as oop okay oop so oop is all about classes and objects okay so what is the difference between these two and uh, you know uh, the most uh, exciting part of oop is the difference between these two or uh, class and objects and that has to be understood very clearly to my uh, according to my point of view and uh, you know class a class is nothing but a blueprint it's like a blueprint or a template okay and we'll quote some examples on this don't worry uh, as of now let's assume that class not assume let's understand that class is actually a blueprint or a template so what do you mean by blueprint or a template right so let's say for an example we have a car let's say for an example we have the blueprint to uh, you know to uh, design a car okay or design a mobile phone okay let's go to the internet and see how the blueprint looks like you know okay again let me uh, let me come back to pythonic way later so first let's understand uh, you know i'll say blueprint of a car i'll say blueprint of a car yeah this is how it looks like right you know yeah let's have this picture with us so this is how a blueprint looks like it's not actually the uh, it's actually a the outer morphology it seems it's not in a uh, internal structure so this is how the blueprint of a car the outer structure of a car will look like having this blueprint you know again having this blueprint you can uh, you know manufacture a lot of objects right and in this case those objects are your cars actually right so say for an example i like uh, in audi you no know, i like audi uh, uh you have a blueprint to uh, you know the company has a blueprint to manufacture audi cars and they can manufacture 1 million cars or uh, 10 million cars based on their needs uh, based on the sales rating but the blueprint will be only one okay the sketch will be only one okay based on the template they'll manufacture a lot of you know for a particular model they will be having only one sketch okay one blueprint and you uh, use based on that blueprint they can manufacture a lot of objects makes sense right so let's go back to our notepad and say class is a blueprint or a template and using that you can create a lot of objects but class is only one again this is a some you know this may confuse you but please remember this class is only one and objects are actually uh, objects actually belong to the class you can create objects of the class you can create 
n number of objects for a particular class you can ma you can manufacture your own object for a particular class only if you have the class you can manufacture your own objects and i'll tell you in a short in python how to create objects of a class and that has a technical term i'll tell you that also fine okay objects we have seen about objects so that's it so say for an example i have a class okay let me call an example i have a class say uh, dot okay i have a class say dog and uh, it's uh, think of any say dog a dog is a class right you know how how a dog looks like right you know how a dog look, look like you know how what does a dog do you know that but you know that's a class okay that's not actually your object that's a class a dog is a class and inside the dog class you have n number of objects right you know not every dog is same take where take breeds like take varieties like uh, you know uh, labrador pomeranian then you have a lot of varieties right so each uh, you know each variety may have a thousands of dogs you know you might be having a dog i i don't have dogs let's assume okay through this assume through this code let's assume that i have a pet in my house and that's you know uh, let me name the pet let me give the uh, short name for a pet murph okay my dog's name is murph let's assume that let's say, okay so murph my murph would behave like uh, you know would behave like based on the training that i have given to him right so actually you may be having a dog you might be having a different pet in your house that's also a dog but that is unique right you have your own dog and i have my own dog but together all belongs to the class say dog fine so they belong to a class dog but you have uh, your own dog my ha i have i know i have my own dog okay so oh that's all objects right so let's okay that's how objects objects work in uh, python fine okay class and object moving on we have certain conditions to uh, not condition we have certain uh, you know uh, ways to define the uh, object you know an object is defined by what okay how would you, how would you define an object let me say i have my pet murph i have my dog murph how would i define him okay i define him by his uh, behavior and properties right you know when i say properties think of like it's uh, you know it's outer appearance okay like uh, the shape of this shape of his mouth the uh, color of his body like that okay that, those are properties or attributes and uh, his behavior like he will make some sound okay not every dog will make the same sound okay of course this may it might look similar but that is actually a different that's a minor difference you can note that okay every dog will have his own voice right like human beings okay so yeah uh, actually i can quote one more example if i have a class say human beings okay that is actually a class but you know every object you know if i create objects of the class human beings that is actually me and you okay objects are here you know if i create objects of human beings that is actually me and you right uh, you know you have a lot of objects in this world the world's population uh, i mean I'm, i live in a country called india and uh, india has a population of 130 crore so we have 130 crore objects for a particular class say human beings sounds good and each objects will have its own properties and behavior let's leave dog for a while i think human beings will make sense more fine so even uh, objects are nothing but 130 crore i don't know the world population to be honest so let me stick with india so 130 crore population approximately okay so in india in a country in india so 130 crore objects for a particular class of human beings i'll precisely I'll, I'll call it as human beings in india that's the class name okay human beings in india is the class name and for that class you have 130 crore population sounds good so 130 crore objects okay can you create 130 crore objects in python yeah you can okay you can create n number of objects but you know if you want to create 130 crore objects in a python program then it will take another decade for you okay so fine so on, uh, okay objects and each object like you and me is defined by its own every man is unique here right every woman is unique so unique properties right say for an example i i may have a beard right i my uh, my eyebrow length uh, then my fingerprint a uh, fingerprint is actually a uh, thumb impression is actually a unique uh, you know property right so we are unique okay each one is unique so those are called as properties okay again that should be attributed inside the object so properties fine properties e each property is unique for a you know 
the property is same okay everybody will have thumb impression everybody will definitely have thumb, thumb impression but the value differs right you know my thumb impression will be different from yours right the value different the value will differ but everybody will definitely have that and everybody will have to yeah uh, you know have you know have the uh, have some certain things right properties fine so properties actually uh, belong to a class right every human being if i say every human being will have thumb impression then properties actually belong to a class the, uh, and objects will have certain values for the properties it will have unique values for the properties okay i think i'm confusing you so let us remove that here let me define that here okay not i'm not let me go to the pythonic way later like how would you code it in python let me go to the later first, first of all let's understand the concepts here so properties are nothing but let me have thumb impression as a property right so i can declare a variable called as thumb impression in this under this class and i'm creating an object let me say object sujit okay object sujit now belongs to human beings okay fine my friends would call me alien but i, I actually i am i belong to class say human beings fine so sujit belongs to human beings let's assume that for okay, okay believe that okay fine so sujit belongs to human beings and uh, sujit may have a thumb impression Le okay let me uh, define thumb impression by values okay certain values and array okay like uh, the impressions may be an image right an image format and you can we can uh, define image in uh, okay image as a two dimensional array right the pixels values okay uh, okay let me say the thumb impression as a value right a value uh, can take from 0 to 10 because we have to define that here right we have to assign the value so 0 to 10 a strong thumb impression will have 9.8 and will have a you know a lighter kind of thing a light, very light thumb impression will have a value of 5.6 let's assume right uh, let's around the range of 5 and 6 and a strong thumb impression will be 10 8 into 10 okay in that range okay so like that let's assume that let's assume okay sujit uh, I might Sujit, I, I might have a thumb impression of 9.8. Let me assume, okay? The, so I'll let Sujit thumb impression. I can, again, Sujit is an object of human beings to remember, okay? Thumb impression, I might have a value of 9.8. So I can assign like this. So now Sujit object has a thumb impression of 9.8 value. Fine, okay? Think of a strength or strength kind of value. So 9.8 strength, 98%, right? So I uh, like, I have a, another, another object, say, Kumar, okay, so that he might have a thumb impression. He might have a thumb impression of value, say, uh, 9.9. It's possible, right? So every every object will definitely have thumb impression, but each object is unique in its value. That's why a properties belong to a class, but those properties define the objects. I hope I made it clear. So. Pro uh, properties can be declared as a variable inside the class, but each or uh, each object has a uh, uniqueness in those properties so every human being will have thumb impression but it actually differs for all the objects that's why properties define the objects and properties belong to a class sounds good i hope you have understood right so if you don't understand if you don't understand this just go back rewind and see it again okay fine super then i have one more uh, you know path, uh, condition called as methods Okay, this would make sense more clearly than thumb impression. Methods, what do you mean by methods? When I say methods, don't think in a way that it, it actually, uh, you know, methods mean way, you know, a way to do something. It's not, a, it's not actually, uh, it's not actually the meaning here. Methods means, what we mean by method is called functions. Fine. So methods are nothing but functions that will do something for us okay you know how to define a function in python let's assume that okay we'll going to see uh, we'll be seeing that in uh, next class okay so functions methods are nothing but functions and uh, those functions will do something okay will execute something you know will execute something in pythonic way in pythonic way if i speaking as far as python is concerned it will be executing something right properties are nothing but variables okay like thumb impression like uh, you know uh, beard length like that the uh, attributes the face attributes the color skin tone yeah that's a very good property right so skin tone let's rate skin tone from uh, 0 to 10 we can easily rate it right so instead of thumb impression we can easily rate skin tone right uh, right uh, 
I would uh, normally look very dark, so I may have a very high skin tone because skin tone, um, mostly people with fair color, they have a low skin tone and uh, skin tone is actually rated on uh, with this, right? And again, it's given by God and uh, no, it doesn't uh, it doesn't make sense to talk about that okay so since skin tone but skin tone define a person you can't avoid that okay so i mean define the outer appearance of the function no offense outer appearance of the function i am also i will look dark okay outer appearance of the person and actually it's not defining the uh, you know inner uh, qualities of a person it, it defines the outer appearance of a person skin tone would actually uh, be a great property for a human being right I mean, uh, to define the outer appearance of a human being, outer morphology, right? So the functions will execute something. Uh, okay, let's get back to our uh, example in, when you're talking about human beings, right? What does human beings do? They will play, okay? Uh, they will study, I'll talk about Dhoni later, sorry. Study and hang out, hang over too, but not necessarily, okay? Play, study, hang out, etc. Look, they have a lot of methods so these are called as methods because these are activities right so these are called as methods and methods must have a curly braces i'm mixing up the pythonic way and the uh, you know uh, real, real world and the real world the way of talking in real world so you know so methods will always have a square braces and this will be also you know at least every human being would have played at least once in his life right so this would also define human beings okay sorry this would also belong to human beings and my objects should be defined by this if i say sujit dot play then sujit is an object plays the plays a game okay inside this I, I can pass a game and i can execute that okay so sujit is an object will now play a game and this can be bundled right an object and method can be bundled by a dot operator right so that's how it works but that's how it works okay but you know the most interesting point here to understand this the properties the methods actually belong to a class and objects of the class if we say sujit and kumar are objects of the class i'll tell you how to create objects of the class so objects of the class they will execute the properties and uh, they will execute the methods and they will be having these properties right because those objects are actually objects of this class and this class has some properties and methods fine so sujit dot play uh, actually when i say uh, you know when i say object it, it it actually executes the method right even this methods belong to the class class is nothing but a blueprint or a template so it doesn't it can't do anything only your object which is uh, belonging to the class can do these methods right that's why we are bundling object and methods like do using a dot operator this is called as encapsulation okay and we'll talk about that later fine so say for an example to understand this you have a family and i'll uh, and i'll ask you what your family let me say let me assume that your class is family right and inside class you have four objects right let me say father minimum four objects minimum three objects father mother or uh, it depends upon you but you have objects father mother and uh, you the three objects let's assume that father mother and you and your sister okay four objects i can create four objects of this class how how i'm going to do you know I, I'll, I'll tell you later okay you have to create four objects of this class i'll i'll get back to pythonic way later so you have to create four objects of this class after that I'll ask you, uh, you know, what your family does in weekend. You will say, uh, watch movies, play games, play Sudoku. Sudoku is actually a game. And uh, other, other than that, we work in uh, weekdays and we'll hang out uh, with other relatives in uh, weekend. You actually does, but not your family does the, you know, not your family is uh, doing that, doing those methods. It's actually the objects inside the family doing that method, right? When I say, uh, you know, watch movies, and play games who will play that who will watch the movies your father and mother and you right actually the objects inside the class are doing those methods okay so when i have methods like you know watch movie let's form uh, let's you uh, let's follow camel cases this is called camel casing and this is very common in java let's follow this in python too so uh, you know the second uh, the second word should be capitalized first letter of the second word should be capitalized like this fine watch movie then play games fine so these are the methods which belong to your family but your family is not executing it don't confuse the objects inside the family called as 
uh, father mother and you are executing this that's why we are bundling object and method right that's encapsulation let me say uh, father dot watch movie so he will now watch movie right okay when i say family doesn't make sense it's, it's just collective noun think of like that in english it's collective noun okay it it is not actually executing it's it's just a blueprint okay so it's objects inside the family that's father mother that will actually execute this methods and this method should be defined under this class i, I think it should belong to this class again and your objects of this family should execute this i hope i'm not confusing and you will get some ideas when we actually code it in python see you there and in next class let's go to our ideally and code it okay bye bye Welcome back guys. In this video, let's actually uh, write a code using object oriented programming. Okay, use, let's use objects to write a code. Before that, uh, when you have the basic knowledge in Python, you might have come across a lot of objects when you have, when you actually code, uh, you know, programmed a lot of programs in Python. Okay, do you want to see that? Okay, let's talk about the basic stuff. Okay, so we have, a, you know, let's we have uh, an integer let's say a equals to 5 we have an integer here it's very simple let's have an integer and it has a value say 5 that's how that's how we declare an integer right let me print the type of it you know you have a function called uh, type you know python has uh, you have a function called type and if you uh, you can actually pass a and this will give you uh, the type of a right so let's see what it looks like okay go I do. And uh, uh, for information, I am working in an IDLE called as Visual Studio Code, and uh, you can actually uh, work in any IDLE you want. You can also work in, I know, default Python IDLE that's actually available. You go to search, and we are working it right. IDLE, if you search, and you get the Python. If you if you have installed Python in your computer, that will show you for you, and uh, you can also use that. But it doesn't matter because we are not we are not going to use any special modules. Okay, fine. Object oriented is available in API for IDLE. Let's move on this. It shows it belongs to a class in wait it's actually the class that we are talking about later uh, that we were talking about previously yes it's actually the class okay so a is an object okay think of like that a is an object which belongs to a class called integer and uh, you, you don't need to uh, you know specify that you know uh, a is an uh, a belongs to integer class you don't need to create object of integer uh, you know you can instantiate uh, like this. I'll I'll tell you what is instantiation later. And uh, the moment you uh, write a equals to phi, it actually creates an object which belongs to the class integer. So a, a, a is now an object of class integer. Okay, a is an an object of class int. Wait a minute, I have not defined any class called integer. Yes, of course, you need not do that. Okay, the, the Python, the Python, uh, you know, inbuilt, uh, inbuilt module has some classes for you. And one of the classes is called integer. And if you uh, write like this, a equals to phi, it actually creates object of that particular class internally, implicitly creates object for, the, for you. Let me play with this more. Let me say a equals to uh, b. Okay, let me have b equals to sujit. Let me print the type of this. Print find type of b guess what happens uh let me comment uh let me comment this code so just so that it's not it will not disturb us fine yeah it says it belongs to class string okay so so just is, is an object of i mean b b or sujit is an object of class string okay so we have classes inside python and you can you are actually creating objects of python okay so this for your this is for your information that right? there are inbuilt classes inside the python inside python uh, uh you know inside python module or something like i don't know say so inside python you have inbuilt classes fine uh you might be asking whether you have methods for those class you know we talked about methods right you know uh, we uh, will say if a class belong we class has a method play study hangout for a class like human beings they have methods like pay study hangout and objects of human beings actually execute those methods we talked about that right okay and even now i told you b is also an object of string fine so string is a class inbuilt class so that has an object say b i'm creating an object of class uh, string 
does this has some uh, you know uh, do ha do we have methods which belong to string right uh, you know uh, do we have methods yeah of course let me say b dot you know dot operator is usually uh, used to you know bundle object and method so i have an object of uh, class string here okay belong to class string i sorry on three three belong to wait sorry belong to class str that's class name is actually str okay we'll call it a string but str okay because you can see that in here fine so b is an object of class str now so str has some methods defined and inside it okay str has some functions inside it and attributes inside it and you can actually use that by creating an object i have created an object here okay b so b dot uh, now b dot dot operator then you press uh, you know control space i hope you can actually expose the methods and let me use one method i'll say lower lower and whenever you are using a method you have to uh, do like this okay you have to uh, put a crown braces parenthesis let me print b now let, let's check what happens oh wait i think uh, this return something and you have to assign it to a variable say uh, c c and let me print c fine yeah it works you can see sujit and this would make sense if i uh, capitalize everything so that you can understand it uh, that's that's for my understanding okay yeah you can see we got output let me clear everything here it makes some uh, confusion okay let me clear so well got, you got a clean screen okay i'll just execute this now okay you got output say so just everything is you know it's not capitalized everything is in small letters now okay so what i'm doing here is let's try to understand what actually happens now b is an object capitalized to sudit which belongs to class string and using b you can actually execute some methods available so lower is a method which is available in class string uh, a lower is a method so you can use an object you can use an object to uh, access the method that's how object dot method okay so this will return something say uh, my name uh, whatever i in the information i'm giving inside so that will be uh, i mean in, giving inside b you know in this case it's sujit and that will be uh, returned as a lower case return full of lower case letters that will be stored in c right so i'm printing c it will be printing lower case letters so here what we are basically doing is basically doing is right and uh, uh, object dot method okay so that will execute if i say string dot uh, lower this will not work okay so object dot method so i have starting methods also we'll talk about later and what a starting method we'll talk about later fine so to summarize what i'm actually doing here is let me write a multi line comment okay so summarize i have a class called string inside python okay inside python and i'm creating an object say b and that is initialized to a value so just okay and this is a different way if you want to create objects of the classes which is already present inside your uh, python okay uh, inbuilt classes this is inbuilt class so this is a different way of creating okay this is not it will not work in our our own classes okay so you just uh, type b and you assign some value it will uh, you know it will identify the class for you right if i say a equals to 5 it identified it as integer if i say b is equal to it identify it as string okay so it will identify for you but in our own classes in if we define classes we have to you know um, we have to make uh, the interpreter identify that okay it will not automatically identify our class i'll talk about that later okay so just and i'm using a method called lower in which is present inside my string and since b belongs to a class say string and i can use my b to uh, you know execute this method okay and i am storing it in c okay wait a minute wait a minute fine this is work there now i have an object of a i have an object of integer there that is 5 that has a value of 5 i that's a a is an object of integer please remember this okay and uh, if i Uh, okay let me write here okay that doesn't matter a is an object of integer now i have a that's an integer that's fine i'm saying again can i try to access a method say lower can i uh, you know can i impose the lower to a lower method will this work think of a while pause the video and think okay will this work 
fine okay let's run this and check whether, whether it works okay let me store it in some other variable say z okay the return value should be stored of course it's not going to return anything to be honest we can see we got an error because int int is a class int is a class which doesn't have this method say lower this lower method belongs to the class say string okay this lower method belongs to a class say string and you can create objects of the class say string and using that objects only I'm repeating using that objects only you can actually access the method lower okay because lower is a method belongs to string so using those objects belong to string i mean sujit in this case that's a string and you can actually access the method lower but here a belongs to a class say integer and we don't have any method say lower inside integer and we have a lot of other methods say for example control space you have a lot of methods right here fine so you can actually use the numerator real and all that's all method conjugate and all the method so you can use conjugate pass them and you can see the output all right so if you press control space you'll get all the methods which are unique to the particular class that's how objects classes methods work fine so don't confuse yourself inside a class to summarize class string has some uh, defined methods so actually defined okay it does it it knows what it uh, it's going to do okay it, uh, it is actually defined and if you are creating in this case if you want to create an object of uh, you know in, uh, in internal class that's very easy right so just assign the value right that's it if you create objects of th those classes and you can actually you know access that me those methods okay belong to that class but like that okay so if you create an object of integer class you can actually use the methods which belong to integer that's how objects methods work in our next class let's write our own code using object oriented programming right you let's define our own classes instead of using classes like integer and string let's define our own classes fine hey guys welcome back and uh, yeah i am an instructor here mask here so in this video you know uh, till, uh, till then we have seen about uh, uh, classes objects and methods right of course attributes in this video let's actually uh, we have also seen about the uh, you know the default classes and default objects that are actually available in python in this video let's create our own class and and instantiate the class with objects so instantiating are nothing but creating objects of the class i'll tell you okay i'll tell you wait so yeah let's define a class so to define a class in python you have to use a keyword called as class okay so use class keyword and give the name of the class now so that's your wish you can uh, go with any name uh, say let uh, let me go with students okay so i'm going to create a class of students okay so let me go with students and uh, yeah first of all uh, let me uh, you know let me teach you how to create objects of this class okay until then let's have it as pass okay so if i say pass i am defining nothing inside this class okay so i am defining uh, i'm not defining anything inside this class so this class is basically empty now that's what we mean by pass right so i'm just passing the class okay the class is empty but there is a class called student it is empty okay but you can instantiate the class i mean you can create objects of the class and you know that you can create n number of objects right so yeah uh, let me say i am also a student so let me uh, create my object so student sujit equals to so how to create an object in python you know it's very simple uh, give some space so, so that you can understand so this is called as class definition and uh, of course we don't have any definition there so let me say sujit equals to you have to uh, so this is my object name now so to create an object of uh, any class in python you have to define the object name first so it's your wish you can give any name for the object right because it's your class and it's going to be your object right so sujit is an object now and uh, equals to student okay students okay so that's how you have to create objects so students is the class name right so your object name equals to your class name with a uh, round basis that's actually called as constructor we'll talk about that later fine so you have your object here name sujit and equals to the class name uh, round basis right so this is what you call as instantiation or creating objects of the class fine instantiation creating objects of the class fine so creating an object of the class is called as the process is actually called as instantiation okay so an object is also called as the instance of the class now that's another important point i want to insist okay an object 
is also called as instance of the class because we are instantiating the class using that object okay the technical term is uh, instantiation is a technical term and it means that creating an object of the class fine so you are in actually instantiating the class with the help of the object fine so you are creating an object called student wait in a class of students uh, will there be only one student it's not like that right so you have a lot of students let me create one more student say john and he also belongs to students so students so he is now the uh, uh, john is now another object of the uh, class say students okay okay throughout this course let's stick with this okay let's stick with this uh, class and uh, uh, objects so we have two objects here actually we have only one class say students and we have two objects here student sujit and john fine and i can create one more object say aravan okay he is also belonging to students okay fine so now i have only one class but for that class i have three objects so you can create n number of objects for a particular class that's what i'm trying to say and if you run this code uh, let me check okay this will not uh, print anything that's fine but uh, let me check whether it it is getting executed or not fine okay i think uh, yeah for your information i am working in visual studio ideally fine you know that yeah it works no problem so that's conda uh, you know that's an error because of uh, anaconda terminal which is special inside and um, that's not our content so let's leave that it works no problem and it doesn't print anything because i don't have any uh, you know printing executions there i have to do that fine clear so that's how you can define a class and you can create objects of the class fine so you can define a class like this and you can create objects of the class like this what is given there okay fine after that i'm sorry yeah I think that that's all for this video. In our next video, we'll talk about the constructors with the same code. Thank you. Hey guys, good to see you all again. So in this video, uh, let's talk about uh, you know some interesting stuffs in uh, this. Uh, in, you know you can actually execute inside this class. Okay, some interesting stuffs. You know, first of all, I'm going to talk about. Uh, let me write a multi-line comment here um, so that it will be uh, clear. So I'll, I'll put a colon there. So colon is important. Okay, that uh, that should be colon. That's a syntax of Python. Okay, uh, again, Python has a very smooth, uh, clean syntax when compared to other programming languages. Fine. That's why Python is uh, you know favorite. Uh, you know, that's why Python is the favorite of you know many people. Fine. So I'll write uh, in a, a comment here. So first, first of all, we are going to see about magic methods. Fine. So there are something called as magic methods or special methods which are available for you inside your class, and we are going to talk about that first. After that. We're gonna talk about yeah inside magic methods uh, you will have you will be having constructors okay so constructor is also a magic method I'll tell you why it is called as magic methods okay uh, you know magic methods are special methods moving on we are gonna talk about the methods you know how to define methods inside the class and how to access the uh, methods how to execute those methods after that we'll go, we're gonna talk about attributes fine and after that we'll talk about inheritance okay that's the core concept of who we have here in Python. Fine. So that's all about. Okay, that's our uh, you know that's our balanced topics, and uh, we have to discuss about that. Fine. So yeah, in this video, let's talk about the magic methods. Fine. So what do you mean by magic methods actually? So let me remove this. Uh, you know, so that we're not confused. We have three objects here, and we have one class which is called student, and all the three objects belong to student class. Okay. Let me have one more object. Okay. Say so Felsi. That is also equals to students. Okay. We have four objects now. Fine. Because I I love even numbers, that's why. <laughs> okay, fine. So we have four objects of the same class. Fine. So let me remove the pass keyword because I'm gonna define something now. So you know uh, the point here is this. You know uh, this step is called as you know listen listen this carefully. This uh, you know statement is called as instantiation, right? Also this is also instantiation. This is also instantiation. That's fine, but. Here, what you are basically doing is you are creating an object of the class, right? You are actually instantiating the class using the help of an object, right? So you are creating an object of the class. You know, whenever you are you create an object of the class, I repeat, whenever you create an object of the class, by default a method will be called. Okay, uh, by default a method will be called. Okay. So please understand this whenever you create an object of the class by default a method will be called but it has some default execution you can modify it according to your needs okay that we are going to do in this video fine so that method is actually called as constructor fine that method is actually called a constructor that's why uh, we have the round braces here the round braces means methods right so 
you are actually calling a method okay you are indirectly calling a method here maybe uh, some people take it as indirectly some people you know directly because of this uh, round braces that's the main point here is whenever you create an object of a class a default method will be called okay that method is called as constructor okay here in other languages you know like java or you know um, c++ in other languages we have constructors there also but the constructor will have same name of the class right so if the class named as students uh, that there uh, in c++ and java the constructor's name is also student but here uh, in python it is called as init method okay so init method and let's uh, write it and show you and uh, if you are defining any method you have to use a def keyword okay def means define okay so you have if you are defining any method you have to use that keyword okay only for methods not for attributes because attributes are nothing but variables okay so not no, not for that so def this is a method now so init method okay so in since init method is a magic method okay init method that's your constructor right so init 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 stands for initialization so whenever you initialize the class with an or instantiate the class with an object that method will be defaultly called okay so that's called as init method or constructor method why it is called a constructor because you know uh, class is nothing but a blueprint fine class is a blueprint that's very clear and if you want to create an object of the uh, blueprint you know say for example car in our in our previous example we saw about car right so we, we saw the car blueprint of a car so if you want to actually manufacture a car you need some uh, you know manufacturers right so a manufacturer actually um, i mean a manufacturer actually manufactures the car using the blueprint fine a manufacturer actually manufacturer actually actually uh, manufactures the car using a blueprint the car is an object here so blueprint is the class so um to even to create an object of the class you need something called as in the case of cars you need something called as a uh, manufacturer right so only manufacturer could manufacture the car from the uh, blueprint likewise here the constructor actually cre constructs the object right okay i'm not confusing i hope so constructor is a method you know when i say method it does something right so constructor is a method you know uh, that constructs the object i could say fine you know you mean you mean that creates the object fine you how your object should be that constructor constructs the object that's why it is, that's why it's called as constructor okay fine so so whenever you uh, execute the statement like whenever you create an object of the statement the constructor will be automatically called that's your init method will be automatically called init method is also known as constructor fine so since it's a magic method so why it is called as magic method it's because it's automatically getting executed right you are not actually uh, you are calling it but it's indirect okay so whenever you create an object of the uh, class it is automatically executing right it is automatically getting executed that's why it's called as magic method okay why it is called as magic method it is automatically getting executed fine that's why it's called as magic method and for magic methods you know we have a you know we have a different types of notation called as underscore notation okay so you have to put underscore underscore that's double underscore recall you have to put double underscore for magic methods to define magic methods you have to put uh, double underscore double underscore it's a magic method or called as a special method okay so in it okay in it in it means initialization or constructor you know that again put double underscore and put a colon that's how you can define a magic method again uh, this will be automatically called when you create an object okay fine this is called as constructor fine that's it and uh, to define any method you have to put round braces right that's it okay round braces and here another important concept to be revealed called as self okay so you have to pass self by default okay whenever you define any method not only magic methods not only the constructor not only the constructor not only the init method not only the magic methods whenever you define any method in say the class you have to use pass the keyword self okay so what do you mean by self here okay let me make sense now what do you mean by self it's actually pretty simple guys okay self refers to the current object okay so what do you, you know uh, if you are you know if you are familiar in java or c++ uh, not c++ java you have a keyword that called as this right so this refers to current uh, object same as in python self refers to the current object you know wait i couldn't under, you could understand that wait i'll explain uh, so let's uh, execute it okay let's see uh, what happens let's try to study this code see the fifth statement you have sujit is equal to students right so you are actually 
instantiate instantiating the class using an object called as sujit fine using an object called as sujit you are uh, actually instantiating the class or in other words you are creating an uh, object of the class which is called named as sujit fine so in sixth statement again the now now this uh, execution will you know go to it will follow on to sixth statement right in sixth in sixth statement you are actually creating another object and this is this is named as john okay so in another statement this is named as aravind and this is again an object of students fine so you know the each object is unique okay in each statement you are having different types of objects and each object is unique fine so i told you whenever you create an object of the uh, class this constructor will be automatically called right but you know this should know uh, this constructor should know actually which object you are you know using to call the uh, method that's call the constructor fine for example in the fifth statement i am with help of sujit i am calling the constructor in sixth statement with the help of john you are calling the constructor or you can so i told you whenever you are creating an object it's called it's, it's mean uh, it means you are calling the constructor in seventh statement you are using aravind to call the constructor so in each statement you are using different objects right so this self keyword will refer to the current current object which are using fine so whenever uh, in the fifth statement if i try to uh, call the constructor now self will refer to sujit Again, moving on. Next statement. Now, self will refer to join, uh, John. Okay, moving on. Uh, if you you execute this statement, Aravind is equal to Sujit. Now, self will refer to Aravind, right? So, self refer to the current object, right? So either Sujit, John, Aravind, or Felsi, depending upon the execution. So, whenever my interpreter, uh, you know, Python is interpreted language, like right? uh, line will be interpreted. Uh, you know, each line will be interpreted, okay, line by line. Fine. So, in the last line, Felsi is equal to Sujit. So if this is executed now self will refer to felsi like fine so you can create n number of objects and uh, one by one it will be executed so self will be referring to each and every object right so that's how it works okay so self will be you know by default it should be appended with methods okay and for static methods we have different uh, type i will talk about that later okay so system dot sorry print something right print hey i am calling the constructor fine this let's check what happens okay just inside the init initialization method i have only one statement called a print statement for my understanding so let's check what happens run the code yeah you can see we got the uh, hey i am calling the constructor four times it's because we are actually uh, you know creating four objects and at the time of creating each object the constructor will be automatically called i told you so in it will be automatically called and uh, it executes the statement fine so because uh, this print statement is, is given under this init block okay so again pro i follow the proper indentation i hope you know about that so you know follow that fine so in uh, another uh, in another uh, statement again i am calling the uh, method fine so that's why it is executing four times because i have four objects and i am calling the constructor four times fine i told you uh, whenever you create an object the constructor will be default uh, you know, defaultly called okay fine that's fine that's fine uh, let me use self in my print statement okay so that it will be, it will be making most sense <laughs> fine wait before that you know uh, can i pass name here can i pass my name uh, in the students can i pass age or some parameters let's check uh you know can i pass uh, sujit my name okay because this is nothing but an object name and this is uh, you know that is not exactly you know you can't print that right it's an it's an object name okay it's an object variable name and you can't print any variable name say a equals to 5 variable you can't print a right if you want to print a you have to put it in double quotes okay you can only print the value fine you know that would not make sense fine so i just pass the name first after that i'll pass you know uh, a number which is my uh, so i'm talking students here so let's pass roll number so 190 is my roll number let's assume that and uh, after that let us uh, you know okay let's find let's pass age so name roll number age so age will be 25 right so let's pass that okay so we are passing three parameters here so at the, whenever you create an object this will be automatically passed okay so we have three parameters sujit 190 and 25 that's fine and again you have to get these parameters there okay so this if you are passing some parameters like some arguments so just 190 and 25 name age and roll number you have to get here right you have to 
get you know you have to uh, get in the function so let's get the parameters so i'll say name i'll name it as a i'll say roll number roll okay low roll will be fine so i'll say age okay so that's happening i'll say sujit kumar so it will be not confusing with uh, my object okay my object is sujit so it, uh, my name is sujit kumar so it will be not confusing with that okay again you can give any name that you wish fine but the point here is you can see we have four parameters here okay say self name role age we have we are actually in need of four parameters this function init method accepts four parameters self name a role age we are passing only three here fine we are passing only three sujit kumar 19025 and we are uh, intending to uh, we are intending to pass sujit kumar to name and 192 role and 25 to age okay where does self go okay so self will refer to the object say sujit fine and again this is another interesting concept that you want to understand fine so self will always refer to the object and whenever you are uh, you know uh, you know you are using an object the object will be automatically passed okay that's what we mean by self fine so self will automatically refer to sujit name will have sujit kumar role number will role will have 190 age will have 25 now that's how it works fine okay let me print something okay let me print return not not return let me print uh, i am i'll put a uh, fine after uh, before that okay let's print uh, that, that that will do before that we have uh, we are getting actually the uh, dummy arguments right it's nothing but called as formal arguments okay the dummy arguments we have to define the attributes you know what kind of attributes i'm talking about here the attributes are nothing but name age and role number and recall remember that these are not actually the objects attribute okay these are just your form, formal arguments your dummy arguments which you are actually using to store these values fine so uh, again i'm repeating uh, these are actually the formal arguments which you are using to store these values and these uh, will not be attributed to the object for that you have to use your self keyword because self refers to the object now right self now refers to sujit so, so you have to use the self keyword and you have to use the dot operator i told you that so, okay dot operator to attribute anything to an object you have to use that dot operator fine dot and again i'll say name equals to name i'll explain this in a minute please wait this might confuse you role role is equal to role fine self dot age equals to age fine so in this please uh, you know look into this carefully so you have a uh, you know i have written something weird right so say self dot name equals to name what do you mean by this okay we have name here and we all we, are, we, we also have the same name here so what do you mean by this you know uh, let me tell you this name is actually different from this name fine for that okay let me put it in capital letters so, so that we will be understanding the difference so that it will not confuse you fine super now name will have the object so sujit kumar uh, will have the value sujit kumar role will have the value 190 age will have the value 25 these are just temporary arguments or formal arguments to store the values actually to get the values from the main program this is my main program right main program actually starts here and i'll tell you how to uh, you know define the how to declare the main method in python program i'll tell you again it's not uh, you know not compulsory but it's a very good method fine it's a very good practice to uh, mention main here you know like c c plus plus here it is not compulsory to put void main or something but uh, you know it's very good practice to make to main method here and i'll tell you how to put main method fine so this is your main method let's assume that so it has sujit kumar and that will be stored in name roll number age fine so now you know this uh, will be assigned to self dot name okay when i say self dot name is equal to name name will have sujit kumar now i mean the small n name with small n will have sujit kumar now no doubts and uh, this will be passed to self dot name which is n is capitalized okay so this will be passed to or this will be assigned to self dot name so what do you mean by self dot name again so self refers to the current object say student and sujit dot name okay sujit self refers to current object say sujit and sujit dot name so name is now your attribute i mean name with capital n is your attribute is your actually your attribute and these small letters okay these small letters are nothing but your dummy arguments or formal argument they are just to store your value and you have to assign that value to the original attributes fine and for your for your uh, understanding let me write it here 
say name capital uh, see the capitalization role and age are nothing but are your actual attributes of the object they they define the attributes of the object or they are called as the attributes of the objects and you have small name sorry name with small n and role they are nothing but the dummy variables or dummy arguments to store the value right to store the value that is getting from the user after getting the value you have to assign that to your original attributes then only you can access that right so you have to assign that to your original attributes that's clear after that let me print uh, you know what we have got inside the method block okay so inside the method block let me print what we have got so print you know print i assume that you know uh, string formatting so uh, i am put a placeholder there i assume you know that this is the basics of python so i am dash my roll number is again you put a placeholder there right and uh, my age is again you put a placeholder there dot format right that's how you can format a string right so format and you have to give the values for to be assigned to this placeholder so we have three placeholders here and you have to pass three values you would have guessed that first of all we are going to pass self dot name so that's how you can uh, use your attribute we have assigned our name name is now sujit kumar that is actually assigned to self dot name and whenever you use that you have to use the keyword self dot name you see the capitalized end here and by the time you would have understood that this small small letter like small uh, variables like yeah, name roll number age are just for storing a temporary variable temporary values and you have to assign that to your attributes and you can as use only your attributes and you know you can have the same name here don't no problem we can you can have the same name but to understand the difference i am having a capital n so you have to use only your att attributes not your dummy variables and it will throw an error if you use that fine save dot roll and self dot capital h that's it we have done so let's check uh, what is getting printed and uh, again i am to pass here let's say uh, peter john is full name okay let me assume that full name and he has 189 and he has uh, ages 29 fine roll number is 189 aravind and his name is aravind kumar let me assume or aravind raj that's that looks pretty much better so one eight, uh, 193 is your roll number and his age is let's say 24 fine felsi let's say felsia fine so here uh, her edge is uh, 167 or oh, sorry her roll number is 167 her edge will be let's say 29 or 28 okay that's the age is missing here so that's not a fine so we are passing three arguments for each object it's name roll number and age so this should be uh, you know passed to the init method and whatever you have inside the init method will be automatically executed let's check that fine before that um yeah you can see we got the output but this may confuse you so let us press clear and again I'll execute that clear that's it you clear everything you know the comment i assume that okay fine we have we got the output here fine so yeah let's uh, study at least one execution so that it will be easy for us to understand so uh, whenever i create sujit okay let's leave sujit for a while okay whenever i create an object of fel uh, students called as felsi fine so i am passing three arguments here by default i am passing three arguments say felsia not by default i am intentionally passing three arguments felsia 167 and 28 name roll number h that will be stored in a uh, name roll number h and self will refer to felsia okay self will refer to felsia now because i am in 15th statement felsi self will refer to felsi uh, assume that i am in 15th statement so i am passing three arguments self will refer to felsi name will be felsia roll number will be 167 and age will be 28 see that okay fine after that i am assigning felsia to self dot name which is object dot name so object as an attribute say name and name is attribute again so object as an attribute say name and i am passing felsia to that fine again uh, my self object which is my felsi has an attribute say role and I am passing role to that, which is 167. Fine. And uh, self.age, that's felsi.age, I am passing 28 to that. Okay. So I am that. And now self.name will have felsia, self.role uh, will have 167, and self.age will have 28. And if I print that, this will be printed like I am felsia, my role number is 167, and my age is 28. That's, that's what I am getting printed. Okay. That's what it's getting printed there. And that's how it works. Okay. Whenever you, uh, you know, you 
create an object and if you pass three arguments and this method will be automatically called that's why it's called a magic method of special method that's how constructor works i'll see you there in the next video that's how constructor works that's all about constructors i hope you have understood if you have any doubts please do uh, you know take message me or uh, use the q and a section to interact with me thank you see you there in the next video welcome back dudes i hope you are all fine so let's continue with our series on uh, object oriented programming in python so let's close this file i'll create one more file for you okay i'm using visual studio code for your uh, reminder so i'll save this file so i'll save this as code 2 fine so it works so i'll clear the output of my uh, previous file you just say clear it will clear the output for you that's fine i'm using terminal here that's my you know i think windows partial not come python okay python terminal fine so in this you know what i'm going to do is i'm going to use you know i'm going to apply my uh, knowledge in object oriented programming to uh, define a class called as complex numbers you know complex numbers and i'm going to create a complex number like that i'm going to do you know what what are complex numbers right i assume that you know already so complex number will have a form of you know uh, x plus i y or j y to be more precise it, here it is there. Well, let's say i y because that's going to print i y only so let's say i y fine so x equals to x plus i y right so that will be uh, like that so yeah so you have a real part and you have an imaginary part there so a real part is x imaginary part is y there that's so you know that's that's the basic form of a complex number so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a class of complex numbers and inside the inside the class i'm going to have some methods okay from default methods okay let me do that okay so that you can understand you know so in this class uh, sorry, in this lecture we are going to uh, define our own methods instead of using init only we are going to define some more methods like so let's do that so let me say class complex numbers let me name this like this complex numbers put a colon that's how you can define a class and after that you know uh, i'll say i'll modify my uh, constructor which is def underscore underscore init underscore underscore right so i'm gonna get three arguments one is self another one is real and another one is imaginary so i'll say img so when i say img is not image it's imaginary fine so i'll say self dot x equals to real and self dot y equals to imaginary again i hope this will not confuse you uh, you may be clear with this in the uh, previous videos like so i'm i'm getting two arguments here say real part and imaginary parts i'm getting i have to get when i were create an object i have to pass two arguments one is the, my real part and imaginary part and this will get the uh, the real part will be stored in x and the imaginary part will be stored in y attribute and using this object you can actually access so x y so I, how i'm going to print my uh, complex number it's very simple uh let me print a number alone okay so that it will be more so let's say uh, i'll say i'll put a placeholder there say plus i'll put again a placeholder into j right that's how we can uh, create a complex number fine that works self dot x and comma self dot y or i have to use dot format here i'm sorry so dot format fine so what it will do you know i hope you know that i assume that you know here because it's the basics of python so so first the placeholder will have the value of self dot x self dot x will now have the value of real value that we are passing so that will be stored to self dot x and first placeholder will have self dot x that's fine and second placeholder will have self dot y and what will be printed you know uh, if i say 5 and 2 5 is my real value and imaginary part okay uh, it's my uh, 2 so 5 will be stored in real and 2 will be stored in imaginary 5 will be assigned to x self dot x and uh, 2 will be assigned to self dot y and if you self dot x and self dot y here 5 plus 2j first placeholder will have 5 and second placeholder will have 2 so it's 5 plus 2j fine that that's how we get getting print just for understanding it's printing that all. that's it okay let me close that's how you can define a constructor we have done that and you can it's optional you know if you are actually defining a constructor or not it's actually optional for you after that let me say def def and uh, uh let me define one more method called as add okay i'll call it, i'll call it as add and when i uh, whenever i say add it should add two complex numbers fine okay 
it should add to complex numbers okay let me talk about this later before that uh, i'll do one thing if in, instead of uh, doing this in our constructor itself let me define one more method for you called uh, get number or get complex number get complex number uh, to actually uh, print whenever i call this get complex number and again this is not a magic method you can see is just a normal method i am defining using def keyword and whenever i call this get complex number uh, that print up statement should be executed there will include that print, print statement here and by default you have to pass one argument say self that's it you need not pass any other argument because this is not going to get any no argument whenever i call this method that should be printed that's it okay that will be included this fine i hope i'm making sense here i'm just remove the print, print statement from the init uh, init uh, you know method the constructor method because i don't want it uh, you know to print whenever i create an object okay whenever i create a complex number here it is creating a complex number right uh, you know we have, we have a class of complex numbers and our object is you know object can be any complex number so whenever i create an object in other words whenever i create a complex number i don't want it to print okay only when i call get complex number it should print that that's why I'm including print in some other method. I hope I'm making sense. So that's how let's come to main method. Let's get back to your intentation, you know, get off your intention intentation. You will be uh, back to your main method. Okay. So main method here, let us uh, declare a, uh, you know, complex number. Let us create an object of complex number. In other words, let us instantiate the class using an object called, uh, uh, I'll name the object as say, uh, complex one any uh, that's complex number one it means complex number one and i have to call the class right so i mean i have to call the in, uh, init method by using the class name so you have to put the class name. that's how you create an object right? object name equals to class name and you have to pass two argument it shows here okay whenever i put a tab here not tab control space i hope yeah you have to pass two arguments here say real and imaginary part real number is uh, 10 and imaginary is 12 okay you can see we got uh, we, it's showing that we have to pass two parameters so real is 10 and imaginary is 12 i am passing 10 and 12 that will be stored here fine that will be assigned to that okay fine that's how we can create a complex number let me run this code let's check what happens nothing will be executed you can see we got nothing because uh, this will be printed only if you call uh, this method okay now how to call that method let me tell you that okay so i have told us i have told you so many times only using your object you can uh, call your method right i i got an i got an example in the uh, you know starting uh, uh, classes of this course i got an exam i got an example actually you know your family does not uh, do anything it's actually the objects inside your family like father mother father is watching tv mother is cooking something if you say my family is watching tv that is actually wrong the so family is a class and inside the family we have objects like fa you know you family uh, you your father mother like that okay so you uh, you're all ob uh, you know if i say my family my family is a class and uh, i'm an object of my family right so that's why that's okay you know i can study i can watch tv that's you know that's actually executed by an object right so i am executing the uh, process of watching tv uh, i am executing the process of watching uh, you know series tv series or uh, some web theory so object can only execute method that's the point i want to insist here only objects can execute methods right so i'll uh, use my object say complex number complex one so that's my object here complex one to execute the methods uh, let me call the method get complex number i'll put i oh, know round round basis that's it that's how we can bundle object and method okay so you have to uh, use an object dot and method that's how you can call the method so now this method will be called and you can see we have self here which refers to this complex one fine you can see we got output 10 plus 12 j fine so because it's getting printed right so that's prints output i can even i can create one more complex number say complex 2 equal to complex numbers i'll say uh 15 20 i'll say 15 2 okay 15 minus 2 let's see what happens okay nothing will be different let's see 15 minus 2 15 is my real part and minus 2 is my imaginary part okay i'll use the object complex 2 to get to call the method get complex number okay fine and let's see what happens you can see we got the output fifth ah yeah this is the uh, problem here 15 plus minus 2 j because uh, our statement is like that okay so what i'm going to do is um I'm going to modify this statement now. I'll say uh, 
you know in brackets i'll put that would make sense in uh, some cases but uh, you know it's a better way to use another any other formatting of printf if you want fine that's how it works or you can use an if statement to check whether uh, you know uh, let me uh, do that for you let me check whether if uh, you know self dot again you have to use self keyword whenever you as is an attribute say real or imagine number you have to use the self keyword right so self dot uh, y if it is less than zero meaning it is you know if it is a negative number then what you have to do you know this is print statement let us remove this let us put it in here like if it is a negative number you put minus j you put uh, nothing you put nothing because there will be a minus uh, you know there itself you have a minus you put nothing fine so if it has a else if it is a plus uh, you know if the positive number print plus format self dot y that's how it works so let's run this code and check what happens you can see we got the output say 10 plus 12 j and 15 minus 2 j so what happens is we have included one more condition say self dot y that is actually refer to, referring to our imaginary number now so imaginary is if you say if you pass a negative imaginary number self dot y if it is negative which means meaning it is less than zero uh, you are just printing it you are you you are neglecting the plus here and by default that will have a minus you are actually neglecting the plus here and you by default it will be having minus and that is getting printed like this so 15 minus 2 j fine and else if it is a positive number then you put plus because by default it will be not having plus you know explicitly right you have to mention that that's why i am putting a plus that is getting printed 10 10 plus 12 j it printed as 12 plus 12 j so for each object uh, you can actually print your class print your complex number like that so let me create one more method okay let's talk about math okay that's how you can create your uh, you know your own method fine let's talk about magic methods for a while so we, we have talked about only one magic method right so in it fine we'll talk about another magic method say say for an example i'll, I'll ask you a question okay I'm leaving these leaving these behind like uh, not talking about oops let's ask some question a right? basic question like so when i say a equals to 5 uh b is equals to uh, b equals to 10 i'll ask you the uh you know value of a plus b what you will say it's actually very simple right it's pretty straightforward right so a equals to 5 and v equals to 10 if you add that a plus 5 plus 10 will give you 15 sure no doubts okay that's fine but the point here is you know how it is actually doing fine whenever i am saying uh, a plus b what is doing inside okay what is uh, you know internally acting inside so here if in objects say for an example this is a variable so again this is an object in python no doubts if I say I'll I have to add two complex numbers, say complex one and complex two. If I okay, complex one is some number. Let, let's assume that some number in complex two. If I ask you to add these two numbers, say complex one and complex two, what will happen? So you have to define the methods. You have to define a method for that. And the different point here is that uh, you know the method name should not be uh, you know insisted here. To understand it clearly let us let us say uh, we have one method here get complex number here and to call the method you have to use your method keyword okay so i mean the method name okay method name you have to use the method name to call the method say get complex number but here in special methods or magic methods you don't need to use the name okay so for an example it's in init here and we are not using any init right we are we are not using init here by automatically it gets uh, it gets called whenever i am uh, instantiating the class using an object automatically it gets called that's the speciality of super methods sorry magic methods or uh, special methods so uh, this is our own methods they use a defined methods again everything is user domain this is normal methods so you have to uh, use the method name to call the method right to get complex number is the method name here and you have to use that to call the method that's perfectly fine but in special method you know you don't need to for example if you want to add two numbers okay if you want to add two numbers let me remove this okay if you want to add two uh, objects if you want to add two objects to be more precise if you want to add two objects you have to use your magic method called as add i hope we have a magic method called as add or some it's add okay you have to use your magic method called as add the underscore underscore add and underscore underscore like that and if you are if you have to pass self by default you have to pass self no doubts fine so fine so uh now 
if you okay let me say pass here let me define it in a while okay let's let's not uh, you know make it empty let's pass something and we will define it in a while no problem so if you want to call add if you want to call add you can just uh, you know, do like this complex one you can use two objects complex one plus complex two fine and this will work which means when i say complex one complex two plus complex two you just note the plus sign alone okay when i say complex one plus complex two just note the plus sign plus sign alone if you execute the statement it will call the underscore underscore add method that's why it's called as magic methods you know i am not i uh, you know mentioning as add here if i say plus this will definitely call this add method that's all that's the speciality of underscore underscore fine it's definitely called the add method okay let me execute this and show you say i want to add two complex numbers fine so okay i don't add two complex numbers self super you know but the confusing point here is i'll say this more statement the confusing point here is you know self will refer to only one object right but if you want to uh, use add function add is nothing but a binary function so binary method it will take two argument if you if you, you can add only two numbers right think of like that you can add only two objects so if i say complex one is an object of uh, let's say complex one is an object of complex numbers and complex two is again an object of complex numbers and if you want to add these two you can do that no problem you can do that and complex one plus complex two if i pass like that you know self will refer to only one object right you know i make any sense i hope so complex if i say i mean a comment here complex 1 plus complex 2 i'll say if i i told you if i say plus this method will be called okay and uh, that's a speciality of this uh, magic method that's fine if i say self self refers to only complex 1 so what about complex 2 here you have to refer that also that then only you can add that right uh, that for that you have to use other keyword fine other will refer to the other uh, object okay so you have two objects here complex one complex two if you want to you have to use an uh, called as other keyword fine okay that will work okay let me add these two complex numbers it's very simple self dot you know x plus other dot x right you have to add the real parts let me say this is adding the real parts and you have to store it somewhere right uh, let me store it in uh, some something called as some attribute and uh, which will not refer to any object so some some uh, temporary variable to be honest it will, it will not be referring to, it will not be referring to any object i'll just return it okay so i'll say uh, a a equals to fine so a will now have add the some of the real parts okay so self dot x will refer to the real part of complex 1 and other dot x will refer to real part of complex 2 because your self keyword is now referring to complex 1 other keyword is now referring to the other object that is complex 2 fine and b equals to self dot y that's your imaginary part and other dot y because we know our attributes are x and y fine so you can use that anywhere fine Okay, we have used it there and we have used it here and we are using another method so that's attribute is you know common for the class fine it's a class attribute so x plus y and i'm going to return a comma b fine and in python you can return more than one variable this is not possible in uh, c c plus plus or java fine so you can return more than one i'm i'm returning both real and imaginary some of real and imaginary parts fine uh, i'll say uh, complex 1 and complex 2 and this will definitely do for me but i have to get that uh, values right so for that I, what i'm going to do is i'm going to just print the value that's it print what it returns okay right now if you don't understand this please wait and uh, let's analyze the output to understand it you know in a deep manner fine let me trace the code again no no problem it's fine so complex 1 plus complex 2 and again uh, i'll say uh, okay let me print this and let's after that we we'll modify it okay fine okay let modify it now itself okay complex 1 complex 2 uh, this this will return a tuple pair Okay, this will definitely return a tuple pair, no doubts. So I'll, I'll get it. To, I'll store the tuple pair somewhere. Let's say uh, i comma j equals to that. Uh, i comma j will confuse you. Uh, I'll say uh, uh, real and imaginary. And this is this won't give you any warnings, okay? Because uh, real imaginary is uh, specific to this function. Don't confuse this with this. Uh, so it, if it if it is confusing you, let me use some other variable name. No doubts. I don't want to confuse you in any case. Okay, fine. Uh, let, I'll, let me say uh, uh, 
x a and a comma b itself that would make sense okay i'm returning a comma b which means i'm storing something and storing the uh, sum of real parts and storing the sum of imaginary parts i'm returning those two as a tuple pair that's why i'm getting uh, that as tuple pair here that's also a comma b that's not a problem fine so this a comma b is different from this a comma b fine and if you are confusing let me say it is a1 b1 fine okay this let's stick with this this is final okay a1 b1 so okay alex i'll explain the execution later let me print print here i'll say uh, uh, yeah i'll put a placeholder and again i'll uh, i'll put a plus again i'll put a placeholder fine and uh, i'll say dot format I'll, I have a tuple pair now, which is sum of the two complex numbers. Fine, I have the tuple pair, say A1, B1, and I have to include that in format, say A1, B1. That's it, fine. You are, you are not referring to any object. They're just variables, right? A1, B1, just variables. You can print that like, as like this. Okay, let me run this code and check. Before that, uh, let us comment these and all, because we don't need that, actually. Get complex number. I'm passing 10, 12, and 15, and minus 2. Guess what happens? Well, th this should return. Uh, you know complex 1 and complex this should return uh, 10 plus 15 so you know 10 is the real part here 15 is the real part of the second complex number if I add these two complex number complex 1 and complex 2 this will call this method add and uh, self dot x will, will be 10 because self refers to complex 1 I told you self dot x will be 10 and other dot x will be 15 so those two will be added like 25 and that will be stored in A self dot y will be referring to 12 and other dot y will be referring to minus 12 those two will be added and that will be stored in b right so i am uh, passing the sum sum of uh, you know a tuple pair the sum of the real parts and sum of imaginary part as a tuple pair that's the exact uh, you know result of the addition of two complex numbers fine i'll print that you can see we got the output 20. i i i forgot to put j here sorry I'll just clear this. You can see we got output 25. I, I just uh, you know clicked the run, run button twice, so that's why it's getting twice. No, no, no confusion. So 25 plus 10j. That's the answer it given. Let's check. 10 plus 15 is 25, so 25 will be stored in A. 12 plus 12 minus 2 is 10. That will be stored in B. So it returns 25 comma 10. Okay. So you are. Uh, complex 1 and complex 2 will return if you call the if you use the statement will return 25 comma 10 okay will return 25 comma 10 and i am storing that in a tuple pair okay a1 will be having 25 and b1 will be having 10 so i am printing that 25 comma 10 uh, in a, in some format I, which i wanted so that's the format is getting printed 25 plus 10j using this placeholders right so the point here is adding uh, real parts adding imaginary parts returning as a tuple pair a comma b that is some of real parts and some of imaginary parts and one more point here is you are not using the name add here you are not using any add here just using plus that's the magic here if you just pay plus and uh, if you uh, you know if you use dander like underscore like this this will be automatically called and that's called magic method in python hey guys welcome back so in this uh, lecture, uh, let's talk about inheritance. Okay, so I'm going to talk about something called as inheritance, which is uh, you know essential concept when you talk about OOP. Okay, uh, again, this is a very very interesting and important concept in Python. Okay, when you talk about objects in Python, inheritance will do anything for you, right? So inheritance is something needed, and uh, you know to make it more interesting, to make it more engaging, I'm gonna you know you. Uh, take my favorite movie and analyze the uh, analyze it using inheritance okay so my favorite movie you would have guessed that is uh, you know guess that movie actually uh, that's a uh, science fiction movie released in uh, 2014 i hope many of you have watched it okay it is a famous movie a hollywood movie science fiction and it's directed by uh, directed by christopher nolan and it's one of my favorite directors and uh, he directed a movie called as uh, interstellar and that's my favorite movie i've seen it uh, more than 10 times okay so I'm gonna you know explain inheritance through interstellar you know so let's you know let, think you are in the world of interstellar and if you if you have uh, you know didn't watch the movie uh, you know if you didn't watch the movie no problem okay you'll be understanding and because we are not uh, you know going to test the plot we are not going to reveal any plot just uh, 
use this idea to study inheritance okay just stick with inheritance not interstellar okay fine so super so yeah interstellar just think think about those characters and their attributes and methods that's it fine so i'll def i'll say def fine i'll say class interstellar okay so class interstellar that's so you can not not def right uh, so i'll say class interstellar that's how we can uh, define a class right so class interstellar so inside this class i'm going to have some uh, attributes and methods so first of all let us write the attributes so you know my objects would be the characters in interstellar like uh, you know cooper that's the protagonist of this movie cooper you know protagonist character of this movie he is something i love a lot you know so is someone i love a lot okay so cooper and uh, after that uh, brand i took the doctor brand and uh, you know another favorite character is murph character that include will include that also so those are my objects okay i can create objects of the class say for if, if i say class interstellar it actually refers to movie okay the movie okay the refers uh, understand like that it refers to movie not the uh, actual word interstellar in physics meaning it actually refers to the movie that's it interstellar so i have an uh, i have attributes there and uh, i'll say iq level you know when i take interstellar everyone will have a good iq level you know the characters which are uh, from uh, you know christopher nolan's movie mr christopher nolan's movie will have a very good iq level it, they will be thinking uh, in a different manner all the characters almost all the characters right so let us set the iq level to uh, you know 90% fine I don't know the exact count, so ninety percent. Assume that ninety percent. So IQ level is your attribute now. So uh, this is something new for us. We have not uh, we have not defined any attributes in our previous lecture. So this is an attribute. Fine. So you if you create any objects of interstellar, if you create any object of the class interstellar, that will that object will definitely have the IQ level ninety. Fine. That's why we get it now. IQ ninety. Right. After that, will uh, you know? Uh, let's assume that all the objects will be versatile i mean all the characters will be versatile so let's say type versatile fine fine versatile super after that you know uh, we have two attributes i think uh, ver type versatile if i say uh, that's a string okay so the ca character type will be versatile okay so every character will be versatile that we i mean by that char type i'll say char type that is versatile means every character every character is versatile fine so after that i'll i'll define a method say define uh, say uh, in it okay i'll mod modify the constructor for us i'll say self i'll say self and i'll get the name of the character the name of the character name is same as the object name no worries I'll I'll get it a small name and uh, I'll I think name would be enough. That's it. So I'll declare one. I'll just put a colon here and say self dot name dot name equals to name. Okay, name equals to name. And and what do the characters do in that movie? Fine. So I'll say def introduce. Okay, def introduce. And if I use this method. The, the character the object should, should introduce himself or herself okay so it's a self okay i'll say print print just print that i'll say uh, i am hey hey i am i'm cooper i am brand i am murph right those are the characters you know available if you are if you didn't watch interstellar i'll just say those are the characters okay cooper brand and Murphy. I, I i have to print i am cooper here i don't want to be specific i just uh, put a placeholder here and i'll let's say dot format and i'll put self dot name here that's it right self sorry self dot name that's it right because this will now get the name so in the first line itself it will get the name right so if i call the uh, interstellar class if i call this init with a cooper name say cooper uh, that will be stored in self dot name. Self dot name will have Cooper, so it will. If you use that object to introduce Cooper and the cell, now it will print. Uh, hey, I am Cooper. That's it. Introduce yourself. Fine. So what else the characters can do? I think the characters can survive. You know, most of the characters will survive in Interstellar. Uh, the main characters I'm talking about, like Murph, Cooper, and. Uh, mm, 
brand okay most of the characters will sell away i hope so rome also so i'll spot self here also i'm gonna print hey i'm survive fine and this is going to be common for everyone so i'll say hey i'm survive that's it so i i can have a lot of methods like this you can define a lot of methods like this fine this is possible after that i'm gonna update the iq level for someone right so you know, uh, you know, see, uh, uh, normally in movies, the protagonist will, ha uh, will have some uh, strength more than others, right? So, okay, let me de declare the strength also. Fine. The strength of all the, uh, let me set the base value that is actually 75. That's the base value for strength and each object will have the minimum strength, minimum strength of 79 and a minimum IQ of 90. And they are all, all versatile. And if you want to update here, you can update here, right? So, I'll say update update strength that's the uh, good uh, method name you have to use like that update strength so that will update the strength for that let me pass self that's it and uh, you know update strength means self dot strength right it is self dot strength equals to uh, self dot strength uh, plus value i'll get the value okay i'll just uh, get the value here you know what value it should give it should be updated fine let me say if i pass you know increment the value by 10 by default every object will have 75 because that's it's a variables declare in the it's a variable declared under interstellar class every object will have 75 strength that's not an issue but if you update strength and if you was if you pass 10 here update strength by 10 that's the meaning okay update strength pass 10 if you call use an object to call the method and that object strength will be incremented by the value 10 fine you know uh, self loss strength will have 75 75 plus 10 is 85 let me say it. value is 10 i'm passing 10 so 75 plus 10 will be 85 and that will be stored in self loss 10 that's how we can update this and again this statement is something verbose and i can uh, reduce like this you know you know how to increment in python let's assume you know and this this course assumes you have a basic knowledge in python that's it that's it that's how you can update the value fine okay so after that i'll have a all, I, I hope that this will be enough. We have three attributes and four methods. Again, one uh, one thing is something like that. And we are here talking about something called as inheritance, right? So I'm going to introduce inheritance now. Fine. I'm going to introduce inheritance. Say class. Okay. I'll take one more movie of uh, uh, Christopher Nolan called as Inception. Fine. You know, I'll take one more movie and this class will have everything related to inception and let's assume that each character of inception has all these attributes and has all these methods okay I understand my point I have two classes here actually I have class say interstellar and uh, each object in the interstellar will have IQ character type and strength and uh, versatile and okay and I uh, have a lot of uh, uh, you know methods declared inside uh, interstellar okay fine so this uh, this will be only applicable so these methods and uh, you know attributes will be only applicable to objects which are created which are instantiated as interstellar again these methods will be only applicable to object which are interstellar it is which are instantiated as interstellar and will not be applicable to inception right so how do you do that okay so but i want it it to be applicable to inter i want those to be applicable to inception also because my characters in inception let's assume that they have same attributes and same methods so what do i do one possibility is i can just copy everything here and i can paste it here fine by doing this uh, now if i create an object of inception uh, that will have all these uh, methods and all and all these methods and all these attributes that's fine but this is something verbose, right? You can, you're just copying the same code and this is not acceptable, right? So what you can do is you can just remove this. Fine, you can just remove this. And you have a strange syntax here. Please follow me, okay? So instead of putting a colon here, you put a, bra a bracket and I'll say interstellar. Say interstellar, the, the parent class name. Say colon, fine. What it will do, you know? this is something to be listened and something to be understood here what it will do you know if you put a bracket here you know we, we put braces for only uh, parentheses for only methods right but here it is class and we are putting the parentheses of course inside if you pass the class interstellar 
understand we have a class say inception that is uh, some separate class say inception and uh, inside in, in braces if you say interstellar if you name it as interstellar and uh, the methods and uh, variables which are available in interstellar are now available to class inception also fine the statement is here the methods the all the uh, you know properties the methods and the attributes say attributes nothing but iq character type and uh, i hope it is strength okay so attributes are now available i'll say character strength fine that would make sense okay character strength uh, attributes are now available to class available to class inception also okay i hope you have seen this movie inception if not not a problem and again i would suggest you to you know watch this movie fine uh, my favorite movie right inception and uh, both are my favorite movies interstellar and inception also fine so these methods are and the attributes are now available to class inception also fine so using an object of the class inception you can actually access this methods I, i'll tell you how okay and i don't have any special definition there let's say pass okay i don't have any definitions inside the class inception it just you know inherits interstellar okay just inherits interstellar and that's why it is called as inheritance okay so inception is going to inherit interstellar okay inception is going to inherit interstellar all the methods will be available to inception fine and i'll say by doing this i'll i'll, I'll call inter interstellar as i'll call interstellar as parent class fine and my inception is child class you would have guessed because this actually inherits that right this uh, inception inherits interstellar inherits interstellar again so uh, this is called as subclass okay this is normally called as subclass in any programming language which uses oop okay so the statement would be inception inherits interstellar fine inherit means uh, let me assume that the word inherits means uh, i know the same in biology fine you have biology there and uh, uh, you know uh you can take me as an example i know um, i would uh, just for an example take me i would inherit some characteristic of my father okay because that's because of uh, you know genetic uh, the genetic uh, hierarchy i have so i inherit the uh, characteristics of my father so if i write like this if i write class my father okay my father name here okay my father and i'll write definitions for my father here i'll say i'll write some definitions for my father like my class father i have something like okay father is an object my father is an object let us say but here it is class so in inside class father i have some methods and attributes for father okay uh, okay from methods and attributes i would inherit some of them right i would behave like my father let me say class sujit that's me that's me fine so that is class my father and that's me i'll just put a curly brace i'll pass my father here now i would inherit everything of my father now okay i would inherit everything of my father say sujit fine so sujit is a class uh, now uh, he will sujit will inherit all the uh, sorry sujit will inherit all the characteristics of this father like whatever definition you have that is applicable to sujit also now that's how inheritance works fine and you can you can also define one more class and you can inherit uh, that okay you have one inheritance here and this is clearly explained in java so java we have a lot of uh, i have a course called java in my academy portal you can actually see that so you know i have explained everything in cortex with the real world concepts you can actually take that course if you want if you want to learn java and that also we have inheritance concept right that's how it works and uh, i can also have one more movie let me say dark knight is uh, another uh, very good movie of uh, christopher nolan i can inherit from interstellar itself fine and uh, you can also inherit from inception that is also possible i'm not going to talk about that and uh, you know the characters in inception will have one more unique method okay will have one more unique method called uh, they will dream right so instead of pass i'll say uh, dreaming is another method of the if you have seen the movie inception the characters will uh, you know will get into a dream and uh, uh, the movie will be somewhat confusing dream inside dreams that's what inception means so i'll say def uh, you know dream okay uh, that's a dream method and they have a lot of stages of dream that's it i'll pass self okay i'll say print uh, let me print something you know time being i'm print something not returning anything so print i am dreaming that's it i am dreaming fine so 
now as this are something interesting to be understood here what i uh, what i'm trying to say is now inception will have all the methods of interstellar class means we have four methods in interstellar inception will have all the methods of interstellar class no no worry Inter introduce how i updated and inception will have all the methods in addition to that in addition to that in addition to those methods and attributes in addition to those methods and attributes inception will have one more method called as dream okay because the characters will dream in that movie so inception will have one more method called as dream and this dream will not be applicable to interstellar try to understand because only our inception inherits from interstellar and interstellar is not inheriting from inception and again this is not possible okay uh, you cannot you, can, you cannot put in the inception here because that yeah when the moment i say inception of interstellar interstellar uh, become became parent class okay so it, it, it but automatically it becomes parent class when I inherit like this. So you can't use any method which belongs to inception. Fine. So now the point here is dream will uh, will be applicable only to inception, not to interstellar. But the methods in interstellar will be applicable to inception. Sounds good. So dream is like an extra method, an additional method which is applicable to in inception. So you can define like this. Fine fine you can define like this let me create objects i'll say cooper that's my first object of inter class say interstellar fine and that's how we can create an object of class a cooper is my first object and i have to pass the name because i'm getting a name here you have to pass the name fine to pass the name say cooper i'll say cooper no worries dr cooper fine Cooper and this is uh, he's again my favorite character okay favorite hero fine that's it and another one is uh, Murph Tars Tars is my another favorite character it's a robot right it's a robot Tars interstellar again he belongs to interstellar and again I'll say Tars fine okay i've created two objects of the uh, class interstellar but let me create objects of inception too so inception uh, the protagonist character's uh, name i mean the uh, leonardo dicaprio's character's name is uh, dom uh, dom cob if i am not wrong his cob and uh, cob actually so cob inception i'll pass the full name here dom cob okay that's how we can create objects of inception fine and after that i have one more character as author which is uh, who is basically cop's partner in uh, doing uh, your mistakes okay uh, fine so cop's partner i'll say arthur here also so i have to pass name and you may be asking a question you don't have any uh, constructor here you mean you don't have any init method here you can actually define your method it's not a problem you have it you don't have any method here and uh, you, you don't have any methods which gets name right you don't have like that but you are actually passing the name will this work definitely this will work even if you don't have any method this will uh, this will actually since you are inheriting from interstellar this will actually use the constructor of interstellar i hope i'm clear you don't have any constructor here but you are actually passing one uh, name if you don't have any if it will search for you first in your class only if you search for you first in your class only it will, it will search for your constructor you don't have that constructor here you don't have any init method here but Whenever you create an object of inception, it will search for you only in inception class, but you don't have that. And now it will search for parent class. And in that parent class, you have a constructor and that constructor will be utilized by your uh, inception class. I hope I'm clear. Fine. So now inception, you actually uses the constructor of interstellar class since uh, inception in inherits interstellar and I told you, right? That's how you can understand that. Fine. So that's how it works and uh, let's play with this okay let uh, let me use koopa koopa and let me uh, let me introduce cooper okay so introduce cooper to you it's our hero okay so introduce cooper dot that's how we can call the method right cooper dot introduce that's it introduce doesn't get any argument it has only self and we are passing self okay we are passing self by calling cooper we are passing self actually Cooper self will refer to uh, Cooper now. Cooper dot introduce will introduce Cooper. Let's check. You can see, hey, I'm Dr. Cooper. Super because Dr. Cooper is getting passed as self dot name. You can see self dot name and that is getting printed here. Self dot name. Fine, it's super, right? Uh, let me introduce Cobb to you, which is our hero of another movie, say Inception. That is also my favorite movie. I couldn't leave that. Okay, introduce introduce Cobb and. Uh, 
let me comment Cooper. Cooper Rodriguez. You can see, hey, I'm top uh, dome cop. Okay, so you know what is actually you know strange here because it's strange because you don't have any introduced method inside Inception, but you are using an object of Inception. Cope is an hero of Inception camera movie, right? So you are using an object of Inception uh, to uh, uh, call the method introduce. Okay, so since uh, whenever the moment you uh, call the method introduce, it will search for introduce in your class. Okay, let me say type of cube, type of cob. Okay type of cob let me analyze this for a while type of cob and it will give you uh not not oh it's, it's capital c sorry fine it says hey cob is an object of inception okay so cob is an object of inception that is clear so it will know okay cob is an object of inception so this introduce uh, whenever you use an object of inception cob is an object of inception we have seen that by type typing function by type function so cob is an object of inception so if you use an object of inception to call introduce method that will actually search for introduce method like introduce a method can named introduce only in inception class first so you don't have introduce method here and that will uh, again that will go to interstellar now so in, go to interstellar if you have that method and that method will be executed so self dot name now refers to dom cob okay fine that's called cob dot introduce that's how you can use you can also use update strength fine so update strength will also work and again shows error because it's self dot strength uh, i'll say self no not oh, it's correct actually i have changed it as character strength so i have to change it here also character strength I think you can remember that. Okay, fine. Super. It works. Let me teach you uh, about method overriding, and if you have some interesting stuff to talk, talk about, let's discuss that in the next class. Okay. Thank you. Hey guys, I welcome you all to the lecture. So before I'm, uh, I'm gonna tell you about uh, an interest, some interesting concept called method overriding and uh, super. Okay, super. Uh, concept is actually called super. Okay super keyword like magic we have something called a super we'll talk about that before that let us clear the uh, terminal okay let me clear the terminal super so now let us talk about method overriding so what is basically method overriding recall that i told you whenever you create an object of you know we have two classes here one is parent class and another one is subclass my parent class is actually interstellar my subclass is inception fine remember that because inception actually inherits interstellar for your reminder fine so Whenever I create an object of subclass, say inception, for a while, when I create an object of subclass here, look at here, okay, I create an object of subclass, say inception, it will search for the uh, constructor, okay, you create an object, it will search for the constructor, right, so it will search for the constructor only in the subclass first, okay, if you don't have the uh, constructor in the subclass, it will check for the constructor in parent class and that will be executed, that, that's what exactly happened in the previous class, previous lecture, right fine but here that's what exactly happening here i'm passing a name and you don't have constructed definition here and uh, you, it goes back and uh, it executes this that's fine uh, let me uh, define the constructor here itself fine and uh, in it and you pass self and to uh, do you have the same name okay you, ha you, get, you get the same number of arguments okay so this is identical as this okay this the uh, just uh, reduced i just uh, decreased the terminal size i hope so that it will be more visible so you have interstellar class you have a constructor there and uh, inception also you have the same constructor with same number of arguments i'll say self dot name equals to name after that i'll print something hey i belong to i belong to inception okay I belong to inception here and uh, uh, interstellar is no exception okay so let me print I belong to interstellar here so whenever I create an object of inter interstellar it should print I belong to interstellar okay so this will definitely work before that let me come in this code okay I'll use this later let me come in this constructor and see what happens fine let me run this code and see what happens Okay, I'll, I have already introduced to uh, cop to you, so let me come on this also. Fine. Okay, check. Okay, okay, not working. Uh, fine. Super. 
Let me run this code and check. You can see we got the output I belong to interstellar, I belong to interstellar. In all the four objects, you know, whenever you create an object of interstellar or inception, it prints I belong to interstellar only because uh, it is now calling the constructor of interstellar. Okay, this constructor it says I belong to interstellar. So that's how even if you create an object of inception, it will search for you, it will search the constructor in inception first. You don't have the constructor here. I actually commented that you don't have that. So it will go back to interstellar, it will go to go next to interstellar and it prints I belong to interstellar. That's why it printed I belong to interstellar, but it's actually wrong, right? Inception belongs to yeah, cop, cop belongs to inception. So if you try to, uh, uh, you know, if you try to instantiate uh, inception class with cob object, it should actually print I belong to inception, not I belong to interstellar. Fine. So to uh, avoid these kind of, uh, you know, mistakes in uh, in inheritance, we have something called as method overriding, right? So if you do like this, now let's check. Now I'm including one more constructor. I'm including a constructor here. So let's check what happens. We can see we got the output uh, for first two objects. Say for an example, for Cooper talks stars, it prints I belong to interstellar, I belong to interstellar. But for Cobb and Arthur, it prints I belong to Inception. Superb, right? So, yeah, that's how it works. Because uh, when I the moment I create an object of Inception class, it will look for the uh, constructor only in Inception class first. I told you this so many times. So this will be automatically executed. This is called as method overriding. Why? Because you have the same name okay this is in it and this is also in it you have the same name and same method okay check these two these are identical actually check these okay now check these and this okay check this and this okay the both are though uh, no both are actually identical but this is so that that's why this is called as method overriding okay method overriding because uh, those two methods are actually identical so that's why it's called method overriding. You are overriding the original method with this method. And this would make sense when you, uh, uh, I'll just uh, light like this. Hey, uh, in interstellar, I just say, hey, I'm survived in, I'm survived in, uh, I'm survived in interstellar movie, okay? Okay, yeah. uh, you know, the, no characters will tell like that, but let's assume, let's be artificial for some time. So I am served in Tesla movie. Here I have the same method. Okay, the point here is I have the same name, okay, survive, okay. I have the method name is very, uh, you know, it's very common, survive. Exactly, okay, we have the same definition. Here also we have the same definition. So let me print, hey, I am survived in Inception movie, right? Here, I'll just copy this and I'll edit Interstellar as Inception, fine. fine now uh, I'll, I'll use cob our uh, hero so I'll say cob dot survive okay and you'll be having four statements don't confuse yourself uh, that's because of creating objects so I'll say clear so cob dot so let's say what happens run this code you can see hey I'm survived in inception movie because cob is an object of in uh, inception right so it will uh, let me uh, Decrease this size. Okay. Cobb is an object of uh, inception, right? So it will look for Cobb only in uh, you know inception first. Uh, it will look for survive actually. It will look for survive only in inception first. So in inception we have a method called as survive. So only this will be executed, not this. Again, you might have guessed whenever you call Cooper to execute survive. Cooper to execute survive. Check what happens. Let me comment this. Fine. So th this is understood, right? So when you uh, create an uh, use an object of inception, that will look only for method. That will give priority only to its own methods first. Say inception. If if the method is not present, only if the method is not present, it will look for the same method in parent class. That is, I'm server with interstellar movie. Fine. I hope you have understood. So I'll, I'll comment Cooper Cobb here. I'll say Cooper. Cooper is uh, Cooper belongs to Interstellar, so it should be Interstellar now. Fine. So you got I'll, I'm served in Interstellar movie. So that's work. That, that perfectly works because Cooper is a class of it's an object of Interstellar. So Interstellar has a method say survive. So that works right. That's so we can actually use uh, method overriding. It's called method overriding because you have the same name here. You have the same name here, 
but you know same name of the parent class but you know whenever you create an object of inception or whenever you use that object to call survive use an object of inception to call survive that will print execute only this not this because this will give priority only to its own method first so that's why it is called as method overriding overriding the method fine 